Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the statement of cash flows and see how it will be useful in conducting financial analysis. So in this chapter, as we focus on cash flow, obviously what is important is cash, cash, and cash. Uh, um, cash is much more important in finance versus in accounting. In accounting, cash is just one of many accounts, but in finance, cash is king. Um, we're going to take a look at the following steps. So first of all, looking at a firm's cash flow can help us identify the characteristics of the business. Um, and this will include the life cycle of the business um, that is in. Um, it also will help us identify the strategy of the firm. Remember, we talked about a firm can be a cost leader or it can be a product differentiator where you try to sell premium product. Um, another important thing is identifying se or separating non-recurring and unusual items versus the normal operation of the firm. Next, we can um, take a look since cash flow is not subject to accounting um, choice of accounting methods, uh, it by looking at a statement of cash flow, it actually will give us some idea on what accounting choices or policy choices a manager make. And most importantly, it helps us identify or analyze profitability and risk, which is obviously the most important part or one of the most important parts in financial statement analysis and valuation. Finally, based on uh, the statement of cash flow, we can prepare forecasts about future or uh, the future of the firm. So the, when we create pro forma financial statements, uh, particularly we can then base on pro forma financial statement to forecast future cash flow. And the forecast of future cash flow is the underlying um, data that we use to determine the future value of the firm. So we understand the uses of the statement of cash flow. Now let's take a look at the um, accounting purpose for why we have this statement. Um, first and foremost, the statement allows us to get more information. So, and that's important, uh, particularly focusing on inflow and outflow based on the firm's primary activities. So these are their day-to-day -day operations. Um, when preparing the statement of cash flow, there are two methods, the direct method and the indirect method. Most companies, the vast, vast majority of companies use the indirect method. Um, because with the indirect method, the statement of cash flow will link the income statement and changes um, in the balance sheet to changes in cash. So um, this is important because um, this will provide the relevance and also the evidence. So this is um, this is an important uh, characteristic that we look for when we identify accounting and financial information. So uh, we ha we have collaboration and also reconciliation between the three statements: the statement of cash flow, the statement of income, and also the balance sheet. Finally, on the statement of cash flows, net cash flow is equal to the net sum of cash flow from three types of activities, operating, investing, and financing. We're going to take a look into those um, individually later on. Before we go on to that, I want to emphasize the difference between cash flow versus net income. In accounting, the focus oftentimes is on net income, whereas in finance, the focus is on cash flow. So the two are often very different because most companies use an accrual basis for computing its net income. And because we use the accrual basis, um, the cash that we get from customers do not oftentimes occur in the same time period as the firm recognizes revenue. For example, when you make a sale, we'll oftentimes record that sales into accounts receivable and we receive cash when a customer pays off its accounts receivable. 
Uh, the same goes true for expenses. So if a firm purchase um, goods and services using um, accounts payable, uh, when those expenditures occur, they will be uh, recorded through accounts payable and cash will only be affected when the accounts payables are paid. Finally, uh, even for investing and financial activity, they still don't flow through the income statements directly. Um, we're going to spend a lot more time looking at those and looking at how do we um, capture present value in um, particularly in debt and pension assets and pension liabilities. So once again, there's a difference between cash flow and um, value. In fact, some cash inflow and outflow from financing activities, as we mentioned before, never even go through the income statement. So for all these reasons, um, cash flow and net income are often not the same. To construct the statement of cash flow, we want to recognize there are main three sections. The first section is, and the one that we oftentimes spend a lot of time focus on is the operating sections. So the operating activity includes all the activities directly in, involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the firm. And so this will naturally include um, all the items in the income statement up to uh, operating income. And then in the balance sheet, we'll also typically include changes in current assets and current liabilities. So these are all the um, regular operations, so recurring operations. Investing activity includes um, expenditures as well as, as income, so either purchases or sale of um, assets, particularly plant and equipment, as well as securities. And then financing activities include um, transactions that's related to um, investors. So this will include uh, bondholders, banks, as well as um, preferred stockholders and common stockholders. And then the change in cash balance. So this is the final um, product of the statement of cash flow is equal to cash from operating activities plus cash from investing acti activities plus cash from financing activities. And depending on the life cycle of the firm, you can expect this to be different. So for example, a firm that's just starting up, a brand new company, a startup, you will typically expect um, cash from operating activity to be negative. Um, and the same is true from cash from investing activity because you are investing, you are pers probably purchasing plenty of equipment, you're investing in um, a lot of the operation, and then you have positive cash from financing activity because you are raising money to start a business. Uh, on the other hand, you have a very well-established firm, um, then you would typically expect cash from operating activity to be positive. Uh, cash from investing activity could be positive or negative, depending on what's going on. Uh, if they're purchasing another company or investing in new planning equipment, this will be negative. Uh, if the company is spinning off um, assets, then it could be positive. Uh, cash from financing activity oftentimes is negative because they're paying interest, they're paying dividend, they may not be borrowing new money. Um, so. Changing cash balance, if you decompose it, will really give you an idea on uh, the current uh, stage and strategy of the firm. A picture is oftentimes worth, worth a thousand words, so let's take a look at the life cycle of the firm. So as we said, um, in terms of cash flow in the um, beginning, at the launch phase, the cash flow typically is negative as well as profit. Um, and then as the firm uh, reaches the growth stage, both profit and cash flow will be uh, positive. And then um, as the company reach uh, maturity, a company can extend instead of going into decline. And during this stage, it's not uncommon during the maturity stage for cash flow to uh, be higher than profit, again, due to the various factors that we talk about. 
Now I mentioned um, that for most companies, we are going to use the indirect method to compute the statement of cash flow. But it's useful to take a look at the difference between the direct method and the indirect method. The direct method um, it takes a look at the actual cash flow associated with each activity. So it doesn't give you a direct link. So you have to reconcile between net income and operating cash flow. You have to use a separate schedule. On the other hand, using the indirect method, the amount of cash flow as show us adjustments. Um, so you start with net income and then you make adjustments for non-cash components. Um, and because of that, you don't have to worry, worry about reconciliation because you start with net income and then you make the non-cash adjustments. Because of that, the indirect method uh, is much more common. So what are those adjustments? Um, they include working capital adjustment. So what that means is change in current asset and current liability. And obviously we do not include cash in those changes because um, that, would make, that would not make sense. Um, so cash and current portion of long-term debt, those are, um, so current portion of long-term debt is actually going to be part of um, investing activity. So that would not be operating. Um, however, the cash itself is going to be the end product, right? When we get done with the statement of cash flow, we'll find out the change in cash. So if we include the cash in the adjustment, then we have a simultaneous problem. So that's the working capital adjustment. The other non-cash component of incomes includes um, non-cash expenses, such as depreciation and amortization, um, bad debt expenses. So once again, those are accruals. Deferred tax expenses. Uh, all these are non-cash. Remember, these are non-cash expenses. Uh, Stock-based compensation and pension costs. Once again, these are non-cash. Um, gain and loss on property, plant, and equipment. This is going to be um, channeled through the investing activity. And then finally, equity method income and non-controlling non interest. Again, these are um, non-cash components. And we also don't want to exclude any non-operating activities. So other comprehensive income, which is not part of um, the regular, regular operation, um, we will exclude that as well. So after we, we go through these adjustments, you expect that you can see the changes and you will match the changes in asset and liabilities. Uh, unfortunately, that's not true. And there are uh, a number of reasons for that. The four most primary or common reasons that changes in the balance sheet do not match the adjustment on the statement of cash flows are one, acquisitions and direct divestitures. And the reason for that is because um, the valuation can be complex and the tax consequences of these acquisitions and divestments can be very um, uh, unique. Um, the second is non-cash transactions. We already talked about that. And then there are changes in contract accounts. So those will be the bad debt. Um, and the one that is the most difficult to tra uh, track down is foreign currency translation. Foreign currency translation is another non-cash event. So the losses, so this is not losses in translation, uh, in, in foreign currency, but rather this is um, simply due to the translation. So no uh, funds are actually change hands. So we are not rep, 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 uh, repatriating cash um, or transferring cash. We are just translating uh, foreign denominated accounting statements into US denominated accounting statements and its changes in um, the value simply due to translation. So these are all the things that we need to take into account. In the next video, we're going to go over an extensive example to show you how we construct a statement of cash flows uh, from an actual company. See you soon.